Summer drink. I just want to put a swirly straw on you and just enjoy you gingerly. That's what I want to do. I don't know what that means. Captain Pereira, good to see you. Hey! I'm Olivia Lowe. We are coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. And it's still epic April! Hey! Oh, and it's also Star Wars Week! Oh. Yeah! Which, which officially makes this epic, epic April Star Wars Week! Single person set it with us. We rehearsed really that long. twelve times. It's really hard. It's like twelve a, times. It's like you know, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Like people are like, oh, it's sunny. Like they just do that one. You know, like it's when when tiles are too long. They, you know, it's no like, one chants the name of their show in unison on Always Sunny. No I'm one. I'm just saying when people say it. Twelve times and on that low, yeah. That's well, let's show. Yeah, there they are on green. There's, a, there's all the people that didn't say the name of our show. That's, that's well, that's three of the people, but uh, there's some more. Wow. <laughs> Man, we have we've really sold everything people. that could be you guys all look really nice epic today. about this month. Yeah. Very handsome. Very, very sharp dress code. Oh, oh well, by the way, you guys, uh, I don't know if you know, but yesterday we did a pizza thon. We were giving away free pizza. Yeah! Shame on you for missing out, but you're you're actually lucky because we do have leftovers from yesterday's pizza thon. Ooh. Yeah, so if you guys want some, it's very simple. Give us a call, 805-268-7123. It's fun to dial. And we'll actually add a few pounds to your midsection, and you're welcome. So starting right now, leave your name and number on our Google Voice line by April 29th by 3 p.m. Eastern to be eligible. Yes, we're going to randomly select voicemails to win one of 12 pizza gift cards. Guess how much they are. Ranging, Ranging in price from 60 to $100. $100 worth of pizza. What's your favorite kind of pizza? What's your favorite kind of pizza? Uh, pepperoni olives kind of guy. Oh, you like that? I like olives, yeah. Pepperoni like sausage, it. Italian sausage. Oh, yeah, it's good. You're Better meat than lovers Portuguese. People? I like, I'm like, I'm ultimate meat lovers. What yeah. do you got? I, I love both Supreme and Hawaiian. You got, oh. If, if, you, oh, if really? you put pineapple on your pizza, I love you. Wow. It's a good idea. Good to know. And I don't like people who judge me for it. I like, I like people at parties when they're like, hey, what kind of pizza do you want? And like, well, here's what I don't want. It's like, well, what you don't want, you pick off the damn pizza, no, you lazy pizza. jerk. We're getting Supreme. And I like to have um, red pepper flakes and then dip it in ranch. Let's discuss that later. Huh. On the show today, I'll talk to the Emperor of Special Effects, Dennis Murin, Yay! about the legacy of industrial light and magic. Plus, there's this guy named George Lucas, and he's chiming in about making Star Wars 3D. I don't know what's happening. Then a drunk guy changed the world when he left his iPhone prototype in a beer hall. The Loop is going to summon experts to my Hall of Justice for discussion about Gizmodo's teardown of Apple's secret tent. Yay! Craziness. Doors getting kicked in. Literally. A door was kicked in in this story. Somebody's front door was kicked in. <laughs> Boot to the door. That's how scandalous it gets. Whoa. Where'd you walk off to? Uh, here. <laughs> Plus, today's gadget prawn is Samsung's 46-inch 3D LED. Whoa. I'm not done. What? 3D LED HD TV. Yay letters. Yeah! That's a lot of Anyway, them. if you liked James Cameron's last movie and you have money to spend like James Cameron, today's prawn is for you. <laughs> and Oscar-nominated actor Jackie Earl Haley will tell us. I just hope the old man got the old man got the tractor beam just out of commission. Yeah, well that it's gonna be a really short trip. <laughs> Get into my car. Okay, it's... <laughs> All right. Go. Four. Go. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 That's a good start. That's good. Start good. I like it. So much for convertibles making you look cooler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Or compensating for your tiny penis. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know why they don't? It because is... eventually you get out of the car and then you're in the bed and then it's just you and there are cars outside in the driveway and then it's just you and you're. Yeah, I, I, I've, we tried, can see. I've even tried pulling the BMW next to the bed and it's still tiny. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I get to show it to more women, which is great. Yeah. I get to 
to show it to a lot more ladies, but it's just hearing a wider range of laughter. That's maybe, all that that lease has given me. Maybe you should just um, just do it in the car. Ah, that'd be nice. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Thanks, one random guy clapping in the studio. Or maybe Jake's saying that's the way to his heart. He's like, all right, Kevin. Hey, hey, yeah, no, don't, don't show Jake on camera. Not. Don't you dare show him yes. on camera. Yeah. Let's move it on. Don't show your lover on hey, camera. Hey, hey, you, you. Get into my all right. car. <laughs> Mm. Hey. Number four today, it's a gum commercial from Japan. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either bat crap insane or oddly hypnotic. Oh, um, oh, 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 I'm gonna go for number two. No whammies, no whammies. What? <laughs> <laughs> Transition from the, uh, it's the, 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 I can't now. You got it. You have I, I had it. I had it. And then I was, because you baby bird to look, to confuse. <laughs> and then I don't know, I don't know about this part. I don't know what that is. Yet. So I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it I down. I love it. I, this, all I really got from that is that Fitz Gum apparently turns your dog into an Asian lady girl dressed <laughs> as a furry. In which case, I'm totally down That's to true. chew that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, hey, hey, listen up, Juicy Fruit. Either your gum develops transmogrifying abilities or the international gum race is going to be won by the Japanese. Mm. And I have to say, let me just say, I... I can personally only choose so much kiwi chocolate flavored gum. Ah, I just can't do it. That's true. Yeah. Odd flavors. Odd flavors. But you love them. I, lo I like it. Oh, what's this one? Oh, it's lychee and Sailor Moon. Yeah, I'll pop that in my mouth. There we go. Oh, grapefruit, burnt hair. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Black Black. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that whenever you go. That's an actual name of a gun there. It's really when tasty. When you go there, yeah. um, all the white people just are collecting candy. Uh, no. Like. Just stop it. Like, oh, no candy. wonder they're so big. <laughs> well, they got so many delicious flavors. <laughs> I follow blogs on different flavors of Kit Kats. That's how sad my life is. Oh, green tea Kit Kat, strawberry Kit Kat. What else is there? Chocolate Kit Kat? Oh, there's so many. There's so many. There's, Vanilla. There's, there's a new... Oh, there's oh a, creme brulee one? There's a blackberry and almond or like nut one coming out sometime soon. Very, very excited. Very excited. This guy here. This lonely, lonely man. <laughs> uh, today's number three item is a fantastic play from the game of Hooper Ball. Oh. You know, so. Basketball. Yeah. All right. You. So tomato, that's... tomato. Right. Okay. It's, it's all. A, it's all a game. It's really, all a game. Really Win in Rome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't. Okay. Yeah. So this recent European match was between the best teams of Croatia and Serbia. Now, if you don't know much about basketball, and let's just assume that they don't, just for their sake, just for the kids at home. <laughs> Throw it out there. Okay, Kev. Let's just assume that. Um, you don't know much about basketball. If they don't know much about basketball. <laughs> okay. Well, I want you guys to know this. Do not start celebrating a victory until the clock has completely run out. Is literally on the court. I boom. love it. That's so the good. Best. Hey, and that is why Europeans will never be good at basketball. USA, number one. Yeah. Why don't you stick to cricket and curling, Europe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Magnum PI. Oh, great American treasure. It actually oh, ran for great most of transition. The, yeah. Most of the 1980s, mm -hmm. Magnum PI was on mm -hmm. uh, over the course of eight years. Wow. Uh, there's actually plenty of time to relax and just have a beer. Yeah, maybe too much time. Probably. Olivia. In fact, one YouTuber cut out all that Hawaiian intrigue that was getting in the way of Magnum's Miller times, and the result mm -hmm. is Tom Selleck's most intoxicating adventure. <laughs>
Fun fact, uh, most of the corpses that turned up on Magnum were actually killed by him during an alcoholic blackout. Oh, that's good to know. I, know, I just yeah. hope that I'm dead and in hell before they try to remake Magnum with Ben Stiller. <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? It's like... Wait, what did, what did Ben Stiller ever do to you? It's Night random. at the Museum. <laughs> hey, people love that. Night that's... at the Museum too. People love sequels. What did Ben Stiller ever do to you? Everything else. Hey! I mean, seriously. literally, oh, we can pull up IMDb. I just don't no, have the bandwidth. What, wait, what, what did Ben Stiller, a, a very wonderful guy who's, who's like, put so much warmth and loveliness into the world, ever done to you to make him make you want to... Even talk? you looked confused by what you just said. You know what? You got about halfway through that sentence and didn't believe your own mouth. Because I'm confused at why you, you hate Ben Stiller. Why would hate, you do that? I'm just kidding. People don't know. I'm doing that for Ben. I called him before the show and told him I was just going to say a little joke, and he's like, no problem, Kay. I got it. So, thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Still yeah. on for Fazulis. <laughs> he loves the yeah, Alfredo. No. Still ahead. Stay tuned. Our biggest month of the year continues with today's number one. Yeah. It's a very special Star Wars Stop week. Being here. With a cameo by Great Jeffrey guy. Lebowski. See you, Ben. The Stiller loves me. I'm still a Stiller event. We're still in buddies. Never see the French fries that we were going to use in that comedy, Brian Terwilliger. Yeah. And and they're and, yeah. and they're also my French fries, and I wanted. You know to what? Them. Let it be time of death. Someone just killed Epic April, and that's someone's Brian Terwilliger. Oh. And I know the viewers at home are like, who the f and who the what? I, whatever. Just know in this studio, big deal, big deal, <laughs> just happened. Oh! <laughs> oh, you really did ruin everything. No, we didn't. You're the Today's best. Today's number one love item. You, I love you. <laughs> it's one of the best mashups we've seen in a very long time. Yeah, it's actually called Dude Vader, and it combines one of film's most intimidating villains with one of film's most endearing stoner pacifists. <laughs> yes. Witness the genius combination of Star Wars A New Hope and The Big Lebowski. Darth Vader, if only you could be so bold. The Imperial Senate will not just steal from us. When they hear you've attacked a diplomat... Uh, wait, wait, let me, just, let me explain something to you. Uh, I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or... I don't know what you're talking about. Holding her is dangerous. Word of this gets out. It could generate sympathy for the rebellion in the Senate. Uh, well, I think it's easy money, you know. It's all pretty harmless. She probably kidnapped herself. She'll die before she'll tell you anything. My ex-wife asked me to take care of her dog while she went to Honolulu or Tony to so. Lord Vader, Dude. battle station plans are not aboard this ship. Bummer. And no transmissions were made. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> that literally just reminded me we have to get uh, back to the Skywalker Ranch. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I actually don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, but I don't know, because we already shot that. We were in San Francisco. No, 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 let's talk more walkie. We got to get up there. Let's go. Land speeder. Come on. Yeah! Let's go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> get in! Okay, that has Thanks nothing to do with this bit. Put him down. I don't know why Brian put those there. No, we gotta get to the Skywalker Ranch. Got it. Why are they wet? What? Wait. This thing is fast. Well, it's a land speeder. I mean, speed's in the name of it. Oh, get it. Touch it, Brian. Well, shoot it. I'm driving. You shoot. I'm driving. Get it. Working. That is not working. You gotta make the laser noises. If the really like pew pew. Ah, you got him. There we go. Pretty. Where are we? Oklahoma? Huh? We I don't know. I just turned left. Here we go. Let me get us out of here. Oh, this is Maybe. a lot of fun. You know, it's actually it's probably more fun doing this and flying up to San Francisco. Uh, uh well, you know, this is a this oh, is one way to get there. Oh my god, no, 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 don't shoot! Oh, I've got you! I've got you! Did you just shoot an old woman? Oh. Stop shooting an old woman! She didn't, there's no reason to shoot her. I shoot an old woman. Why did you shoot her? She I was just hanging out. shoot an old woman. She she shot first? <laughs> with, with, her, with her bag of groceries? She shot you with her bag of groceries. Oh, yeah. She might be okay. Well, oh, these, these guns have like a stun setting, right? I was on stun yeah, setting. Yeah, that's, that's Star Trek, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't you have another French fry? You're fine. Oh! Go in there, Gart! I'm gonna go! Have fun! <laughs> go in there! <laughs> Can 
Here at ILM, they've been making movie magic for over 30 years. And just walking around, you know, oh my God, that's awesome. Oh yeah, can you take a photo? I mean, it's Darth Vader. <laughs> Give me one, it's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dennis Murin. Uh, he's the VFX supervisor for ILM. The job on Star Wars at the time, you thought this was going to be just a year, a little freelance gig, you hop on, do some effects. It was much worse than that because there was literally no work. There was no interest in effects. There was no industry in it. There had been 10 years before in the big studio. It was, you know, it was a rare opportunity to even to work with a famous director, a real skilled director who was, you know, under 50 years old and wanted to do an effects film. So I thought, well, I'll just I'll see what George was like. And lo and behold, after it came out, everybody wanted to see it. What was the purpose of forming ILM? George went around and talked to some people in LA about doing the Star Wars. The couple of effects companies that were still around thought it was too big and, and didn't want to deal with it. So ILM was set up to do the Star Wars film and really without the idea that ever it was going to go over or not. Sure. Obviously the effects blew everybody away, the movie's a huge success. And then George uh, decided to do the Star Wars and we moved up here to Northern California. <laughs> Empire was one of the most difficult films that I've worked on, and one of the things we had done in that that was beyond what had been done was the big snow battle. And we used techniques that had been done before, stop motion animation, but did them in a way that was more advanced, with a lot of like very fluid camera movements. And we had these vast landscapes that were massive paintings that had been done for a sense of atmosphere and haze that really haven't been done much before. What about something like Terminator 2, where, where Cameron says, I want the enemy to be made of liquid? There was a big step forward to be able to do T2. George, I mean, early on recognized the advantage of computer graphics. But for T2, we managed to get the models made in the computer as well as composited with the backgrounds in the computer. And what that meant is, not only do they have the shape-changing chrome guy, he was reflecting the environment around him. It was seamless. And the audience was just kind of stunned by it. What would you say the next landmark in CG was after that? Well, after that was Jurassic Park. Something that had not been done is that we hadn't really created something like us, a living creature. And that's what Jurassic was asking for. Are we going to get to the point in five years from now where the entire scene is just that? You know, I think the big breakthrough on that was probably George and Phantom Menace, where so much of that was a green screen film, and that was just beyond what anybody was even thinking. It took the rest of the world three or four years to catch up to try to do it, and then many other films have been made that way since. Where do we go from here? Really, what, what is the next step? Something that I, that I really like that's starting right now is 3D, the idea of, of seeing movie in depth. So to be able to think of effects spatially in a cube, I think has a great opportunity for storytelling. But what about 3D in the Star Wars universe? Well, we turn to the man himself, George Lucas, to find out. 3D is now a factor in making movies. I think in terms of special effects films, it's helped quite a bit. The thing I was always struggling with in making movies that are, you know, at least 50% not real uh, in terms of their CG and not real characters like Yoda. It's very hard to make them real in a 3D space. We made Yoda as a 3D puppet who walked around the set, but he was a real thing. You could see that it was a real thing. When we went to the CG version of Yoda, even though he looked better, no matter how you did it, he was still something that was pasted onto the movie, as all special effects are. And it was very hard to get that sense of reality about him that the puppet had. Once you put those in 3D, which is an avatar, you really get a sense that that person is real. And that, I think more than anything, helped create a reality for Avatar that we weren't able to achieve in the Star Wars films. I have had an incredible time here at ILM. I can't wait to come back in 2030 and see what they've got cooking then. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. Here's a secret that I don't think anyone's revealed about Skywalker Ranch. No no bathrooms. None. It's yeah. just like every spaceship they've ever made. There's not a crapper anywhere. It's so weird, it's right? very weird. I'm driving. <laughs> hey, God. Yeah. Hey. I was... Well, still ahead. We're going to dig into the unfolding iPhone scandal. The cops raid a blogger's house. The Apple cops call the shop. I'm not sure. We're going to find out in the loop.
welcome back to the show. I am Blair Herter. It's Wednesday, April 28th, and here are your top stories. Police, my friends, now know the identity of the individual who sold Tech Blog Gizmodo the prototype for the next iPhone. That's right, CNN is reporting that San Mateo County law enforcement officials have located the prototype seller, but have yet to disclose their identity. The anonymity may not last long, however, as according to CNET, legal experts now believe that charges could be filed against both the seller and Gizmodo for paying $5,000 for the allegedly stolen device. We're going to go in-depth on the unfolding scandal in just a few minutes in the loop. That's right. Wait, there we go. There we go. Cool. Good talk, Kevin. Microsoft owns a lot of patents. So many, in fact, that it suddenly realized, hey, Google's Android OS is kind of infringing on one or more of our patents. So if you manufacture an Android iPhone or manufacture an Android phone, you probably owe Microsoft some money. And that is exactly why HTC just signed a deal with Microsoft to begin paying royalties for their Android devices. Now, this may be the first of many such deals as other Android phone manufacturers are following suit. Interesting enough, though, HTC is currently locked in a legal battle with Apple over similar mobile patents, leading to speculation that this may turn into a Microsoft versus Apple showdown, and also HTC will never make any money because they're giving it to everybody else. Uh, and finally, if you, uh, in the, this is pretty freaking awesome category, the Boy Scouts of America have introduced a new merit badge for video gaming. Yeah. That's right, to get the belt loop and pin for this decidedly not outdoorsy achievement, scouts must do things like teach adults how to play video games and participate in a family gaming tournament. So what that means basically is that you've, if you've ever taught grandma how to play Wii Tennis, you're totally solid. Hi. Totally solid. I'm Blair Herder and you have just been fed. All right, Blair just got you caught up on the oldest story ever. It's the, the tale of a guy who meets beer, guy who loses an iPhone prototype, and Gizmodo meets a prototype and introduces it to the web, and then Steve Jobs releases the hounds. You've heard it a thousand times. Let's meet the loop. <laughs> Joining me now to help us make sense of it all, editor for techmeme.com, Rich Demuro is here. How are you, sir? Yeah. Thanks. Pleasure to have you here. Warm welcome. Um, Let's see it. Did all you, right, let me take it out. You didn't, you didn't. I was in a bar last night. No. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. everywhere. You just go, just go check everywhere. The place. Crack alleys, opium dens. Everybody's got an iPhone but me. Um, why didn't... Okay, so let's, the recap is, again, Apple employee gets drunk, loses the phone sure. in the bar. He apparently tries to call Apple, call a handful of other people. He calls Gizmodo, obviously. They're willing to pay five grand to take a look at this phone. Why doesn't... Apple knows where I am every second of every day. Sure. They've got a beam in, in my nose. It's a total, like, recalled red blinking tracking device up there. They can locate me with mobile me. Why didn't they go to this guy's house, or did they? They did, apparently. So apparently Apple sent some henchmen to this guy's <laughs> house. You know, they knocked on his door, and his, like, roommate, you know, answered the door, and he's like, I don't know where my friend is. Yeah, Dave's not here. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. turtleneck squad. Yeah. yeah. And so, they, and I don't know if these guys just said, like, okay, and they just went back to Apple, like, you know, with their tails between their legs and just said, hey, uh, we couldn't find it. And I don't know if right. Apple took that for the answer, but apparently they did go to this guy's house. Well, and Jason Chen, who's the editor for Gizmodo, they visited him as well, but it wasn't Apple. It was somebody else. Yeah, it was this little uh, React Task Force, which is sort of a nice name for, uh, you know, it's just these, these guys that went there and they knocked down the door. Right. Well, React is the Rapid Enforcement Allied Computer Team, which sounds like a Best Buy Geek Squad in Kevlar vests. <laughs> yeah. With some Sam Fisher gear, and they responded. They literally kicked in his door while he was gone, and they took all, all of his technology, right? Yeah, so him, him and his wife, they come home from dinner. They have, probably went to, like, P.F. Chang's or something. You know, they went to this dinner, and they sit there, and next thing you know, the, the door is knocked in. All his computers are taken, his iPad, his cameras, anything they could have found on there, right. they took. And, but React had a warrant to do this. Uh, yes, they did have a warrant, and that's, I think, where, where everyone's sort of wondering, do they, do they have the right to go in there, even though they had this warrant? Right, and, and, and funny, we should point out, Apple is actually, they have, they have something to do with the, this React squad, right? Yeah, Apple is on the board of this React squad, but, you know, that's not saying much, because Microsoft's on the board, uh, Cisco, all these major companies right. that are up there sort of have an interest in intellectual property, uh, identity theft, all these computer companies are on the board, so it's not necessarily interesting that Apple's on there, but they are part of it. Right, well, but the fact that it's an an Apple phone, and they're on the board of somebody who booted in some dude's front door. I say that there's there's a slight amount of interest yeah. in there, and they definitely me, made least, the call. But I mean, they, they made the call. Now, 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 other people are saying, okay, wait, this, that warrant is that there's no way that's going to hold up. Jason Chen, he is a he is a journalist. He should be protected 
Uh, he has, they have no right to get in there. Is that, is that true? Well, I mean, yeah, there's journalist protection laws. Mm -hmm. So if he is protected under those laws, they were really supposed to subpoena the evidence that they wanted, say, hey, can you please hand over all of your emails? Can you hand over anything that you've uh, corresponded with this guy through? And that way they could have done it, and he could have said no, and then they could have gone to court and mm -hmm. said, you know, had a little process in this. Now, the fact is, if they are looking at a criminal investigation, you know, these journalistic laws, they, these shield laws don't shield you from being a criminal necessarily. Right. So it doesn't say, oh, well, by the way, I'm a journalist. I can do whatever I want. Right. I can pretty much get away with anything yeah. right now, Your Honor. I, I'm going yeah. to cut your throat. Uh, it's not going to happen. And if, could this determine if, you know, people are saying, well, this, you know, is, he's a blogger. He Maybe he's not a legitimate journalist. Well, first of all, <sighs> hasn't that been decided already? Aren't bloggers journalists? Aren't they protected at some point? Yeah. I mean, come on. This guy writes for one of the biggest uh, publishing companies on the web. There's no way someone's going to argue that he's not a journalist. Mm. Now, are bloggers doing things a little different than traditional journalists? Have the rules not necessarily oh, yeah. been rewritten? Well, yeah, they're publishing stories that 7 million people read. Traditional media isn't doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's one thing that they did different. Yeah, exactly. What, yeah. About, the, what about the effect of the next release of the iPhone? Because some people are saying, if you're Apple, you've been harmed so much, people aren't going to buy iPhones in the meantime. And then if, let's say, come June, Steve Jobs stands on stage, one more thing. Oh, you've already heard it all because Gizmodo scooped us. Do they have to do anything different? I think his one more thing is he's going to bring like Jason Chen up on stage and be like, ah, we were all in on this. No. Um, well, <laughs> do, you, do you buy into that? Like no, some, no, some no, no. Trolls a lot are of people, saying no, this no, is a big publicity I, thing, but there's absolutely no way. Absolutely do not. But, I, but, you know, Apple has gotten more press out of this. Obviously, this is not the way Apple wants to do things. They are the most secretive company out there. They don't, they don't show you stuff before they're supposed to. Right. So obviously, they're very unhappy this happened. So, um, you know, but no, it's not a PR stunt in any way, shape, or form. What what, very quickly, is there is there a, a fallout for this? Where do you see we are six months, a year from now? Is, is anybody doing jail time? Is, is anybody paying heavy fines? I doubt. There could be some fines. There could be some jail time. It could just be an example out of this, you know, hey, let's not let this ever happen again. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe there's going to be it, it, there's going to be some repercussions here, I think, depending on how that phone went from the bar stool that the guy left it on to not getting back to Apple and getting to Gizmodo's hands. Right. Yeah, someone's going to get a slap on the wrist. But the real question is, are you going to get the iPhone 4G, if that's what it is? Mm -hmm. Called. I think so. Right? We'll I mean, and now Pretty that I've sweet, seen right? Front-facing yeah. camera, and what else does it have? What other it's bells and whistles we got? Everything. Everything you could ever. I mean, I like the new look of it. I mean, yeah. it looks great. Still AT&T though. Yeah. That's and like, see, that's the thing. They didn't find it. They didn't find the CDMA in it. Right. Yeah. That's so, what I was waiting yeah, for. We were all waiting for that. But I, look, if they want to kick down my front door, they can do it anytime, as long as that phone works on any other network. So, <laughs> Rich, always all a pleasure, right. sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you, guys. Rich Demura from TechMeme. Thank you for keeping us in the loop. Now, stay tuned. Our biggest month of the year rolls on. Jackie Earl Haley. Stop by to sell us on a, a house on Elm Street. I hear it's lovely this time of year. Stick around. The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. Nightmares about Freddy Krueger. Believe it or not, the new Nightmare on Elm Street film actually finds a way to make the classic slasher that is Freddy Krueger even... Not the gold bond! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Earl Haley is here! How are you, sir? What a, what a noisy crew. Yeah, they're, they're excited, man. They're, they're psyched to have you here. I am as well. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of those films that uh, it's one of the few that actually scared the crap out of me when I was younger. And it's, it's you know, my father bootlegged it off of HBO on Betamax. So if you can imagine the, the quality of that film through Betamax with the tracking errors and everything else, that will mess a kid up. That really will. Like, do you, are, when, when they, how did, first of all, how did you find out you're actually going to be Freddy Krueger? Is, is that a phone call and they say, hey, do you want to scar children for life? And you're like, yes, I hate kids. It like, sounds awesome. Yeah. You know, the first I heard about was on the internet. I was kind of surfing around and people were suggesting me for the role. I had no idea they were even redoing Nightmare. But I was, I was pretty intrigued just from the, from the thought of it. So, are you like in a, in a robe and a cat on your lap and you're browsing through and you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, let me call my agent. Yeah, Maybe that would be a good role for me. Like, how do you... Then somebody threw the cat at me. And I, screamed. <laughs> I screamed and called my agent. But yeah, it turned out my agent was talking to the guy. So I met with the uh, with Sam, uh, their director, and mm -hmm. the, the producers from Platinum Dunes. And uh, 
they kind of said, you know, we want to go back to the uh, the origins of Nightmare on Elm Street, and it, uh, back when it was darker and a little bit more serious, sure. and a little more scary, instead of the kind of the camp and the comedy that it right. had become. Tongue coming out of a telephone and right. looking at a girl, yeah, yeah. yeah which I actually, stuff. I still love that scene. But <laughs> I know it's great, right? Uh, yeah. But actually, that was the more serious tone. It was that first film? Right. You know, I think it was uh, uh, wasn't quite campy then. You know, and uh, so that's kind of the approach we went. So we're kind of back to a a darker, more serious uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and so, did they give you the, uh, I mean, you, you did, of course, get the glove at some point to kind of practice and, and get into the role, no? You know, I took the glove uh, home to my apartment a lot. You know, I'd, I, I would literally... Go on. I would go on. I, just so that I could wear it and, and kind of forget about it and let it become second nature. You know, I'd rehearse with it, mm -hmm. um, and, and I would also, uh, you know, do things around the house with it. So that, uh, like, certain things that... You know, it was really hard to sit here and go, okay, what am I going to do with this thing? I found, like, the best stuff came from me catching myself doing something and going, oh, hey, what's that? Remember that. So it was, you Like know, passively to... petting the cat and slicing yeah. its fur and letting <laughs> yeah, it go. Yeah, that kind of thing. Is your, is your, just your wallpaper has track marks all over it because you were just running the glove down the, down the hallways? <laughs> Let's or... just say they kept the deposit. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> um, so does, does the notion of being uh, a... a like, I don't want to say a figment of somebody's imagination, because Freddy is real to a lot of people, but does the notion of potentially scarring a new generation of moviegoers, is that something that excites you? You know, I think the, the whole concept of reimagining this thing and putting it out there mm -hmm. is to, you know, to reintroduce this, or to introduce this campfire story to a new generation. Right. You know, and it's such a great campfire story. It's such a wonderful, sick you know, genre, this, this, uh, you know, the culture of horror. Did you, did you imagine in, in, in your heart of hearts, I mean, I heard for like 15 years you weren't even doing anything, even acting or television or film related. What, what, what sort of things were you up to? Like, did you think oh, you'd be here at this no, point playing man. Freddy Krueger? No, I mean, you're talking about a classic icon. I, mean, I, I would have never guessed that in a million years. You know, there was a 15-year, like, hiatus where I, I quit the business altogether. Mm -hmm. You know, I was out just kind of doing odd jobs and slowly found myself, uh, directing commercials in Texas and uh, when this world kind of opened up again and I was able to, to start acting it's just I, I can't believe that it's led to these incredibly iconic characters you know like uh, you know Rorschach and and, and, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and Freddy and it's just it's, it's mind-boggling this is your it's it's this is your nerd nerd puberty puberty this is like a, your nerd awakening like your it's a total nerd awakening well well we're, we're glad that you're here and we're glad the eyes are open and uh, and I appreciate this the uh, the amount of care that you have for this character, because it means so much to so many people. So it's uh, it's really glad that you got the part. So. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Really, I mean, just say really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. You guys, Nightmare on Elm Street opens in theaters this Friday. Let's see it. 3D TV. We have a 3D TV. Your mind's not blown. That's just 3D TV right there. What? Oh. Look at all that coming out at you. Careful. Whoa, They're swimming in your eyeballs and whatnot. It doesn't exactly work that way. Exactly what's happening. So the first batch of 3D TVs are, are hitting the market, uh, but we want to know if it's worth the price pump. Oh, uh, maybe? You've heard the rumors, you've seen the glasses, but now it's time to actually watch a Samsung 3D TV. With a 6 million to 1 mega dynamic contrast ratio, picture quality looks spectacular especially when you immerse yourself in 3D content. Its 240 hertz refresh rate smooths motion, and you can download Samsung web apps like YouTube and Blockbuster. So find out what 3D looks like with your own two eyes for 2,300 bucks. Oh, no, Kevin, it's this way. <laughs> this huh? way. I'll That's just swing my arms randomly. Okay, so Samsung uh, that does always have a leg up on the competition when it comes to design, and even with uh, added 3D functionality, I have to say, still incredibly sleek. Mm -hmm. All the inputs are, are cleverly built into the side, so you can wall mount it, yep. which is very important. Only 1.1 inches thick. This is really thin. Uh, but what do you what do you think about the black and, and chrome finish? It's very I, chromey. Yeah, I always feel like, look, when you're making a, a, a TV, something yeah. people are supposed to look at, you want to make everything around it as understated and simple as possible. And these, yes. this looks like legs that belongs on a set of a 70s sci-fi space adventure. Yes. Like an egg-shaped chair should be connected to yeah, these. Yeah, it's like, I see this. It's, it's just too shiny. Yeah, but look, Can I you mean, replace them? Uh, I don't know. I don't, you, look, if you, you wall you... mount it, yes, you could pop them off. So there okay. you go. Unless you want a pair of legs dangling from the TV from your uh -huh. wall, which would be awesome. But uh -huh. no. Um, so I think keep it understated. Other or you than just that, tag it. Your game, your tag. Just... 
Spray. Yeah. Ticket to things remembered. Have your initials <laughs> engraved right in there. I like that. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the one of the first 3D TVs available for purchase. Yes. question on everyone's mind is, um, does content actually look good in 3D? And is there enough content to warrant getting a 3D TV? Yeah, two different questions. Uh, uh, Sort of, and not really. Yeah. Uh, the main problem with 3D TVs is something called crosstalk, which means <laughs> you're seeing a ghost of the second image uh, along the edge of the first. And this is what makes watching 3D on a TV uh, hard for a lot of people. It rarely looks like there's one singular image, um, especially when text is popping out. So there you can see, obviously, two images. The shutter glasses are supposed to separate those for you. Hey, look, one image. But when you're watching it in person, you can still see a faint ghost or outline or hint of that second image. And it's just not an enjoyable experience. And this TV had more pronounced crosstalk than some of the other sets that we looked at, which is, is not good. Now, they do give you 3D optimize and, and 3D viewpoint options to help make the 3D image clearer. And Samsung actually told us that if you warm up the TV, the 3D looks better. Oddly oh. enough, they weren't lying. It actually does. You, you have say to say warm up. What does that mean? Like, like you preheat an oven. Like turn your TV on. <laughs> literally turn your TV on if you want to watch it in 45 minutes. Let it warm up. Let 45 the 45 minutes. Yeah, 30, 45 minutes or so to let it warm Are you up. Kidding me? It's a little, a little weird, but um, a it, little it, weird. It it's a lot help. weird. It's a lot weird. I'm not. He's a like, fan hold on, be right back. What are you doing? Oh, I'm warming up my TV. Yeah, I'm just letting this thing. Uh, just kickstart this baby. We'll come back to it later. Is there a is there 45 you, minutes or so? You stand in the front and wind yeah. it up. You hand crank and blow on it. Yeah, it's 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 an old hand crank. That's awesome. Overall, not the vintage. Not the best 3D we've seen, but it's it's more than watchable. Okay, so Samsung also did improve their, their web-connected app store. So mm -hmm. do they make it faster, easier to use? Absolutely did. Uh, the layout is more intuitive. It actually feels like an app store from your computer or your cell phone. Uh, and as of everything now, like right now, everything's free, and there are tons of apps. You have Netflix, Blockbuster, Pandora, Vudu, Yahoo Widgets, etc. They, they absolutely nailed this experience. This is a okay. really joy. So here's the thing is, uh, it's 3D, and mm -hmm. every there's not that much 3D content. There's so, not a lot at all. So when you're not watching 3D stuff, is the picture quality good or is this just for, for No, 3D? actually, when, when 3D is off, let's say you're buying this as a, as a 2D, 3D set because well, you, you kind of have to well, now because yeah. there's really not enough 3D to that watch at all. That would be the only way to buy it. Um, but the time your TV's done warming up, you're out of 3D content. Um, when you're watching 2D on it, it looks amazing. The blacks are deep, the colors are super vibrant, and the amount of detail you can see is incredible. Uh -huh. uh, it has a 240 hertz smooth motion feature, which eliminates motion blur, and that is always something that Samsung has really been the best at. So overall... It's one of the best TVs we've ever seen when you're not actually watching 3D content on it. 2D on this looks stunning. All right, so uh, TV, only $340 more than a comparable Samsung that doesn't right. have the 3D. Uh, so it's $2,300. Uh, what are we rating it? There's some extra costs there, which we'll get to. Basically, we're giving it a 3 out of 5. The 3D experience is not quite perfect on this TV, and we don't know if it's worth it right now to upgrade. Mm. Because, again, you have to buy a 3D Blu-ray player, potentially, for $400. 3D glasses, mm. about $150 a pair right mm. there. The total price, you're talking about $2,900 to get the full 3D experience. And, again, there's really only one true 3D Blu-ray that you can buy right now, and that's... Monsters versus Aliens. Uh, so I know huge fans here, but I say just just wait a little while. There are better 3D sets out there. But Kevin, when 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 will the 3D allow us to reach in and, and grab French fries or um, or a, a burger when I see it? What when will that happen? That's it for today's gadget prod, everybody. But tomorrow we'll be reviewing another 3D TV, and this time it's actually a plasma from Panasonic. And I hear good things. Oh yeah, I'm I excited. Hear good things. I am excited. About but Olivia, that. I am not done rating. Okay. I would like to rate a TV show. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's huh? A little weird right now. But. I'm giving Web Soup with Chris Hardwick five seals of approval. <laughs> Next on a sexy new Web Soup. Sir, epicization is imminent. Turn your key. Inside the kill box. Oh. I'm sorry. You asked for more web soup, and we are giving it to you. The network. Uh, an all-new episode of Web Soup is coming up next and every Wednesday night at 8, always right after the attack of the show. I mean, that's the best time. And we guess what? It. Uh, it has its own website. What? It's g4tv.com slash, shut up, wait for a second, Web Soup. Wait, is that, you have no, to type here's, in the shut here's, up, here's, wait no, for a second? No, it, the coolest thing is that it's like, it's like Tiger Beat online, but just for Web Soup. Oh. oh. It's nothing like that, actually. It's nothing like it. Hey, if you're a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street, stick around. Today's epic giveaway is coming right up. Look at the 3D. Look at it all popping out of here. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's big, it's beautiful, and you're going to love it. AOTS's biggest month of the year continues as we take your dirty-ass car to our Star Wars charity car wash manned by slave Leia's. Then science splices one gene too many in the AOTS exclusive trailer for the new Adrian Brody thriller, Splice. And we'll head to Industrial Light and Magic to explore the relics of a galaxy far, far away. It's epic April all month long. Watching an hour of nerdery is about to pay off because it is time for today's epic giveaway. Didn't work at all, Dan. Uh, yesterday on the show, we gave away an Eon 18 custom gaming laptop from Origin, and the winner is Jennifer C. Yeah! from San Diego, California. All right. Let me just say that dude has a girl sounding name. No, it's a lady fan. We have lady fans. Woohoo, girl power. Okay. In honor of Jackie Earl Haley, today's prize from Gentle Giant Collectors is a set of statues. Whoa. One's even a paint master of the same maquette, which is used. Uh, to ensure they all meet the same exacting yeah, that, standards. That's that. really, really cool. To win both statues, go to g4tv.com slash AOTS. Click on the epic giveaway link and your entry uh, has to get in by April 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern to be eligible. And, of course, we'll announce the winner on tomorrow's show. Mm, love it. Jump back. Thanks to Rich Samira from Tech Team and Jackie Earl Haley. Stick around, everybody. And all new web soup with Chris Hardwick starts right now.